everyone, it's Brianna here with Iris Floral Farm and um, I just have been getting a lot of questions about soil blocking, especially because I've been showing it a lot in my Instagram stories, there's just a lot of interest in it. So I want to talk about why I like to do seed blocking um, and there's a few reasons. Number one is because I'm short on storage space here at the farm. Um, I don't want to have to store a hundred seed trays um, every season and then rinse them out and start all over. It's just a mess. It's time consuming. So seed blocking allows me to eliminate all of that storage need. I don't have to disinfect anything before the season starts. I just need my seed blocker. So that's number one. Um, number two, it eliminates my use of single-use plastic. So a lot of those seed trays you can maybe use a couple seasons and then once you've kind of popped the seedlings out, it, the plastic breaks down, you have to buy new ones all the time. It's a lot of plastic waste. Um, number three, it's a huge space store when it comes to my greenhouse. So if I was having to store each 1020 tray which holds 72 um, seedlings is about this size. So when I'm seed blocking, and I'll show you what my little seed blocks look like. When I'm doing three, the three quarter inch seed trays, seed blocks, I have about 20, 40, 60, 80, I have almost 200 seedlings in here. So I am more than doubling my ability to start seeds in my greenhouse when I soil block. Um, so those are kind of the main reasons why I do it. Um, it's mostly space and expense. Um, there's a couple of caveats when it comes to soil blocking. So uh, the soil mix that you use can be a little bit tricky. Um, you kind of have to play with stuff until you figure out what works for you. I'll be talking about what I use and what works for me personally, but there are a lot of mixes out there. Johnny's has a blend that's already pre-mixed um, that you can try. There's quite a few places, and you can just Google them, soil blocking mix, and it'll come up with a lot of options. Um, so you have to be a little bit cautious with which soil you use, because if you use something that is too fluffy, then when you go to make your soil blocks, they're just going to fall apart. Um, they need to be something that will compact enough that it will hold the shape of the block. So like this is a two inch soil block, and as you can see, I mean they hold their shape pretty well like if I were to just like toss it in the air and catch it it still holds together so I mean a little piece of it came off but really these things are pretty solid so you can't just use normal seed starting mix which is pretty light and fluffy and has a lot of vermiculite and perlite in it um, it won't hold up so this mix that I use has coconut coir in it which is a binder and um, it really has has help to hold it together I find so that's one of the caveats and another one is watching the watering so because the soil blocks are so small they do dry out faster than like a seed tray would so with the three quarter inch seed blocks I have to be out here at least once a day if not twice a day if it's a sunny warm day watering these guys um so there's that you it, it, they take a little bit more attention you also can't just pour your watering can on top of these because even though they're holding together pretty well they could still fall apart so you don't want to just dump a glass of water on top of these because it would just ruin your work um you have to mist them especially when they're small um, mist them with a spray bottle or you bottom water so I just have like a little watering can with a spout and I just pour water right in here and it sucks it up wicks it up from the bottom um, which is a good idea if you're seed starting anything small even if you're using seed trays always bottom water so anyway I'm gonna be showing how I make these how I mix these I'm gonna be showing how I make these <laughs> and um, and my soil mix and what that looks like so that you guys can hopefully try it at home. If you didn't get a chance to sign up for our planning and planting class, I think we have two spots left across all the classes. So if you want to try this hands-on um, and get a little more experience, sign up for that. Otherwise, let's get into it. Okay. All right. So let's talk about equipment. So 
like I said, I don't have to store a lot of stuff when I'm soil blocking. So what I need is one of these. This is a two inch soil blocker. So this one creates a two by two inch square. And as you can see, it puts these little um, divots in there for planting your seeds. It's about a half an inch deep. So a lot of the seeds that you start, this is going to be perfect for those. So I use this for our sweet peas. We will be potting those up shortly, but if you have any bigger seeds, you want to use the two inch. For the smaller seeds like snapdragons, poppies, um, probably like 90% of the stuff that I'm planting right now, I'm going to use this little one. So this is a three quarter inch and it looks really small. So you get it in the mail and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so much smaller than what I usually start my seeds in. That's okay. Um, you don't want to be starting your seeds so early that they are becoming root bound in the tray, um, that they're getting too big. Really the ideal size to be transplanting these is when they have like two or three sets of, of leaves or about four inches tall. If they are much bigger than that, a lot of people think, hey, I'm going to plant super early and then I'm going to plant out into the field and I'm going to have these huge plants and they're going to be producing earlier. That's not true. So science has actually taught us that if you wait for your plants to be too big before you transplant them, you actually reduce your yield. So if you're planting out with a big plant, thinking I'm going to have all these extra blooms, sorry friend, um, it's not going to work out. So pay attention to your soil, um, not your soil, to your seed packets. So Johnny's is great. They put everything on their label when you need to start. So for example, these are sea oats and they are telling me to start 10 to 12 weeks before the last frost. So why would I start those 16 or 18 weeks before last frost? Having them in the greenhouse for four extra weeks, all that's going to do is make them stunted. Um, it's going to make them root bound. It's going to make them unhappy when I finally plant them out because the conditions will be so different than what they grew up in. So anyway, don't start too early is the lesson. These small one, this guy will be fine if you are starting six, even eight weeks ahead of when you're replanting, they'll be fine. So we need these. That was my rant. People are starting tomatoes already. It's February. Don't start your tomatoes yet. Well, not here, not in our zone. Zone six, five B for my field. Other equipment. This looks like the tray your chicken came on. Well, guess what? That's what I use. So um, these big ones from Costco are nice. This one came from King Supers. They're just the meat trays. I disinfect them. Um, you can buy these online, but why would I buy them when I get them for free when I cook anything? So I just save them. It also helps me cut down on waste. So this is what I'm gonna seed block on. You can also seed block. You can start a soil block, sorry, onto these big 1020 trays. They have drainage hole, um, like vertical drainage already built in. You can do that. The only problem with these is if you're starting the smaller seed blocks in here, sometimes you put one on the edge and it'll kind of tip over and they're not as sturdy. So I recommend the flatter, the foam trays if you can. Um, otherwise these work. So let's talk about soil. Let's talk about dirt. dirt. This dirt is cool. So this dirt is from the Vermont Compost Company. It's called the Fort V Mix and I got it from gardeners.com. Um, so this is one that Elliot Coleman recommends for his soil blocking and Elliot Coleman kind of started this whole soil blocking phenomenon. Um, yeah. I forgot to tell you guys about the benefits of soil blocking for the plants. I'll talk about it later. Anyway, um, so this is what I use when I am making the two inch blocks. Um, this stuff is great. It has compost built in. Um, yeah, the, the blended from mature compost made from cattle, horse, poultry, manure, food scraps, hardwood bark, and 
other organic materials from farm, forest, and community, coconut coir, added mineral and nutrient amendments. It's just good stuff. Um, it's not cheap. Yes, this is $22 um, for this bag of potting mix, which if you buy dirt, you know that is not cheap. But if it gives your, good, your seeds a good start, I think it's great. Um, here's what it looks like. I'll give you a little close-up. So it's got lots of good stuff in there. You can see those little like threads are the coconut. It gives it a good base. So that's what I use for the two inch. When I am making the three quarter inch, however, the smaller blocks, I am mixing this Fort V mix with this Jiffy seed starting mix because the three quarter inch blocks are smaller. And so um, some of this compost mix has like fairly large chunks in it. Like this is a chunk. This is almost the size of one of these. So if I put this in my seed block, it's not going to form very well. So I'll show you all of this. Again, play with your soil mix until you find something that works for you. This just happens to be what works for me. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like when we mix it up and when we make the blocks. Okay, so I do about 60 to 40 in terms of my ratio of the Fort V mix to my seed starting mix. So um, I've already kind of mixed some of that up. I'll do a little bit more so you can see the process. So I'll just use my scooper, my handy scooper. And when I put it in, I look for any large chunks just because there is some like there's some twigs and, and some big chunks in this mix and I, I want to make sure I pull this stuff out, especially for the smaller seed soil blocks. So, okay. I mean, that's it. I don't really, like, I don't sift it. Some people will sift it. Um, if you've got that kind of time, awesome. Sift your soil. Um, I don't have that kind of time. I have two kids, so... All right, we're gonna throw, I just kinda eyeball this. Again, I do about 40% of the seed starting mix. And then I kinda mix it up with my hands, just like dry ingredients. Like if you're making a cake, you're gonna mix the dry ingredients before you mix the wet, right? So we're mixing all of our dry ingredients up. All right, that's done. Then I've got my water. And I'm just going to pour in, and I will show you up close what this looks like in a second. All right, let's look closer. So I'm going to show how I make the, uh, the mix. So I've mixed in some water, and what I do is I like to grab the mix, and I like to give it a squeeze. So you can see here, as I squeeze, that there is water coming out. So when I release, I have this clump. So if you don't have enough water in there, it's not going to hold the shape. However, you don't want too much water in there because then it's just going to be mud and it's going to fall apart once you put the block on the tray. So make sure there's no standing water in the bottom of my bucket. I don't have any standing water. But when I squeeze it, for sure some water comes out from between my fingers. Yes, this is what we want. So. To make my block, I'm going to press down multiple times. So I'm going to push down one, and I kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Press down two, wiggle, 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 and press down three. All right, that's pretty good. Take it out. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty well into the bottom of this. It's in all the corners nicely. So I'm just going to use my scraper and I'm going to scrape off the, the hump here, and then I kind of press it in to really make sure that it's all in there good. All right. Feels pretty good, so I'm going to release it onto the tray. We'll see how it forms. Look at this way. All right. Beautiful little blocks there. So that one works pretty well, so I'll show again. Make sure you start with enough dirt in here. If you don't have enough dirt, it's going to be problematic as you go. So the other thing I've noticed is as I'm pressing these out, this is a very close up angle, um, as I'm pressing these soil blocks, 
Um, it does tend to release moisture into the bottom of the bucket. So as I'm going, it kind of gets soupy down there. So it gets more wet as I go with each block. So uh, with that, I do keep a bag of dry soil close by just so that I can add it in as it gets wetter. So, all right, I'll focus here. So press, 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 wiggle. All right. And again, we've got our mound here on the side. So we just kind of level it off, flatten it out. Please. And release. All right. So that's about it. I mean, it's it's pretty much a trial and error type of thing. Um, I'm gonna get out of this angle, and we'll chat one more time, and then say goodbye. All right. So here's how my cute little seed blocks look. As you can see, they have a little divot in there. This one's probably only a quarter of an inch divot, um, which is perfect for planting small seeds. If it calls for any less than that when it comes to seed depth, I just plant right on top of the divot and then I just sprinkle with some vermiculite on top. Um, so just like a normal seed start. So the benefit, and this is what I didn't get to mention, but the benefit of soil blocking from the plant perspective is that instead of the roots, as roots in a seed tray grow down, they start to circle. So instead of growing down and then stopping when they should, they circle and circle and circle. And then you plant them into the ground. And all of a sudden, they don't realize that there's anywhere to go other than circle, circle, circle. That's what being root bound is. So when you buy a plant at the hardware store and it's full of roots in the bottom, that's root bound. So is a problem. It's a problem for pests. It's a problem for disease. It's a problem for drought resistance. Um, it just makes the plants vulnerable. So the benefit of the soil blocking is that when these roots get to the edge of this soil block, instead of continuing to grow around in a circle, they stop and they do what's called air pruning. So it hits the air and it says, this isn't the ground anymore. I need to stop growing. So it goes to the edge and it stops. It doesn't grow in and hit this thing and keeps spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. It naturally does this. Um, it's just how the roots work. So um, they're a lot stronger when they're planted out. They're more disease resistant. They are more drought resistant. They are more pest resistant. So super excited about soil blocking. Again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you're in the Colorado area and you want to try it out, we have our planting and planting classes. You can come try it. Just reach out to me as well um, if you want to just come and give it a shot. I got all of my seed blocks from my soil blocks from Johnny's um, and I'll put a list of resources in the video below. But I hope you guys enjoyed. So sorry that I talked so much, but I'm just really excited about soil blocking and I hope that you guys are too.